Hi, welcome back. In this little video we're going to concentrate on the CSS side of things. So we're going to style this uh, nav, well it's not a nav bar yet, but uh, style the links up so it looks like one. Um, so what have we got? We've got nav, so let's do that first. In fact before we do that we're going to import the font. So if you go to the font you want, as I said, we're going to be using Roboto, Roboto, whatever you want to call it. Uh, press this button up here and down here, import. And you see the style tags there. If we grab everything in between, copy, paste, and also down here it shows you how to use it. Copy, and we're going to apply this to the whole thing so asterisk means everything and there we go so if we go back here and we save that hasn't worked did we start to see so we've got live server running let's see go live there we go live server had gone off so uh, yeah, fallback font is sans serif. If neither of those are available, then it will just default to your system font. Right, while we're here, we can remove any default padding um, and any default margins, and also apply box sizing. So if we make, what did that say? Um, if we give uh, um, something a size, we want it to stick. To that size um, rather than padding affecting the size of everything so we're going to do that also what we're going to do is perhaps give everything a font color RGBA uh, 000 3.7 save there you go now you might think the bullet points are not there anymore, but they are. Um, they're just you just can't see them. But we'll get to that. Um, I'm just going to set up smooth scrolling as well. Scroll behavior smooth, which means that when we click one of these, it will scroll down to the element we want to be at, rather than just jump to it. And I'm going to give the whole thing. A background colour of white. Won't see much there. Right, let's make a comment, uh, make this menu, and let's concentrate first on the nav. So, nav, uh, display, flex, uh, flex, direction column remember excuse me <coughs> remember this is just the um, if we just have a quick look in here this is just this we're referring to anything inside this the actual menu items are inside a, a container with inside that container so this isn't affecting these it's just affecting the immediate children so that's going to be column uh, line Items center, and you'll see it move. Uh, justify um, content center as well. You won't see anything happen there because we haven't given the uh, container a size yet. So let's do that. Height 100 pixels. Let's give it a border one pixel solid red so you can see it. And there you go, it's overflowing at the minute. Um, in fact, let's do that. Overflow hidden. Like that. Um, what else do we want to do on here? So let's give it uh, a width of 100%, which should be anyway, but just to make sure. Um, Z index of a high number 10 so make sure it's always on top of everything else 
unless something on top of that has got a Z index of 11 or higher. Uh, give it a background colour. Oops. Of white. And position of relative. So everything within it, if positioned, is relative to this container. Um, so if we save that, you won't see any difference yet, but if we get rid of this border and apply a box shadow instead. Box shadow 0, which is the X, 3, which is the Y, and blur. We're going to do 7, and the actual colour is going to be 3 points five there we go right so that's the nav done so let's take care of the unordered list element so display flex remember this does contain the list of items uh, so we're going to do flex direction row uh, spelt that wrong. Save. And there you go. Puts them in a row. Um, let's put this zoom back to actual size. I know it's very small, but you'll see uh, uh, a truer representation if we do that. Let's give a, a gap between each of those of 40. There we go. Right. Those bullet points are actually part of the list items, so let's go to nav ULLI and give it a list style of none. That gets rid of those. So the underlines are part of the a, de a default addition from uh, two anchor tags. So let's go to nav ULLI A. And then text decoration on. That gets rid of those. And while we're here, we may as well give it a background colour. In fact, let's give it a border one pixel solid red. So you can see what's going on. As you can see, the anchor tags only take up the space necessary to display the text. So we need to give that a bit of padding. So 10 pixels top and bottom, 20 pixels left and right. Um, save that. Now you'll see it takes effect, but the font size needs to be a little bit bigger, 1.2 times 16 pixels, which is the default font. So rem is basically um yeah 1.2 is 1.2 times 16 so they're a bit bigger now uh what else do we need to do here well we actually need to give it a border bottom two pixels solid transparent and as you can see this has overridden this uh, for the bottom only. So I'm going to get rid of this. And the reason we've done that is because when we hover over we want a two pixel solid line to show up and we're putting this as um, so there's no funny effects uh, appear because we want a transition on it. So let's do that. Transition um, border um, 0.2 seconds save. Um, if we left it at one pixel and then we applied a two pixel border on hover then you'd see it be one and then it would apply the two and it's better to just um, put it in to start with basically but not show it hence the transparency. Um, what else do we need to do? I think we need to do the hover effect now. Li a 
hover. So we're using this pseudo selector hover uh, means that whenever we hover over, whatever we put in here is applied. Um, so what we're going to do is actually do border bottom two pixel solid. Uh, what color do we have? Five eight seven three C. Save. And there you go. But this one we don't want uh, the same. We want something different for that one. But before we get to there, let's just grab this. And then comma, and then change this hover to active. So this comma means okay, as well as this, also apply it to this. And active means when you press on the button, uh, apply this. So you mean you could have these separated out and have two different effects, but we're just going to leave it like that. And the contact button. So if we go. No, P L L I uh, A dot contact without a space, which means if it's an anchor tag with the class of contact, um, let's do the following. So we're going to give it a color of white text. We're going to give it a background color of uh, t -t 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 -t. 5873 EC, I believe that's the same. Uh, yeah, did we give. We need to actually put the class in first of all. Um, there we go. Save. There you see it. Going back to styles. Uh, let's give it some rounded corners, border radius. Five pixels. There we go. Right then, so we need to give that a hover effect as well, don't we? So same thing. Let's just change the background colour so it's slightly darker. Um which is gonna be uh one D three C T two that but that's pretty instant we don't want a border either so we're going to remove border none just to make sure there isn't this border applied to this in fact let's uh, transition uh, colour one whole second which is an eternity uh, and this sort of thing that's not done anything let's go for background there you go that's still 0.2 seconds. This one's so I'm going to change this to 0.5 because one's a bit long. There you go. So that is basically the navbar styled. In the next one, we're going to look at uh, adding the hamburger um, styling. Um, the hamburger menu, like this, we're going to put up here. Um, obviously they won't all be displayed at the same time, JavaScript will get involved a bit later on to sort all that out, but we do need to place the button up here somewhere, so we'll do that in the next video. So, I'll see you there.